Hi, in this video I'm gonna solve chess puzzles step by step. This is Fidel Master Michel Cotto and today I'm gonna show you how I find and solve chess tactics using a very strong method. Keep watching. So let's start. This is the first position. It is white to move. We need to look at the material first of all. So here we can see white has like a rook down maybe they have one pawn as compensation for that rook and then we need to find weaknesses in our opponent's position so well a very clear weakness here is uh, the king because we are controlling squares around the king like uh, g7 also controlling some things over f8 also h7 also f7 so we can say uh, in this position that's a very clear weakness also we are attacking the rook but the rook is protected so we have a dependent piece here on e8 it's something to think about and this rook here on d4 is hanging the bishop is also attacked but is defended so it's also a dependent piece so those are some of the main things we can find in some of the main weaknesses we can find in this puzzle so let's try to target those weaknesses with checks captures or threats well, the first move we should analyze, analyze I think, is knight uh, f7. Um, the only move for black is going to be king g8. And then I'm thinking about another check, the only check. Uh, I can see knight h6. And then if he takes, I have at least the draw because I have perpetual check over here with queen f7, queen f6. And then queen f7 again. And black king will have to stay over here. So knight f7 followed by knight h6 is a very interesting way to get a draw mm, I don't think there is anything better than that in this puzzle and getting a draw when we have a rook down is usually very well so I, I will try with that option knight f7, knight f6 and if he takes perpetual check like this okay okay um, why to move here let's see the material well we have one pawn down the pawn black just capture here and let's find some weaknesses in black's position we see the king one more time it's not very well we're controlling some squares over here and maybe over here the queen is the dependent piece and the rook is uh, is protecting that that queen so also they are in the same in the same file the rook and the queen that's something to think about and then we're going to try to target uh, those weaknesses uh, with checks, captures, or threats. Well, we have a check like knight takes knight, we don't get too much with that. Well, maybe bishop takes, and bishop take, we could be getting some pawn over here. So, this is a move we could analyze knight takes knight, because at some point the pawn on d6 is going to be weak. Of course, a, I, I think there could be something much better than just getting a pawn here. So, I will continue uh, looking for our ideas. The other check is knight here, not getting too much with that. Any other capture, because I don't think I have more checks, so I will work with some captures. Uh, bishop takes knight. Mm, I don't think I get too much with that, too much more than the pawn on d6 in some variations. So now I'm going to think about threats, and there is a very important threat here in this position, very clear, and it is this rook c1. Because I'm getting the rook, I mean the queen, and if the queen moves, I'm getting the rook with check. So this is a very important move, and I'm, I really like, I really have a very good feeling with this rook c1. <coughs> I think the only move for black is going to be queen takes queen after that. And then we can take with check, but then he can play king d7. So the idea is that if I take the queen, he can take my rook. So in that position we could be able to play an in-between move so in, instead of just taking the the queen directly we can give some check or something so we don't lose the rook and uh, that's what we call an in-between I, I can put a link about a video uh, with the tactical thing in between in the description so after king d7 a uh, rook c7 check is in between I'm analyzing so now my knight is going to be protecting my rook Let's say king d8, and now I can take the queen. Yeah, I think that's good enough. I'm getting the exchange. Uh, 
In that position, my opponent can play something like knight takes knight, and that could be a little annoying uh, because then he's removing the defender of the rook. But still, I I have the exchange up. So let's see it on the board. Let's see it. Let's see what I mean. So rook c1, queen takes queen, we check, which is also an in between, by the way. And then I don't want to lose my rook, so I check again. And then after king d8, what I was saying is I just take the queen, then he can take my knight. And then uh, he's removing the defender of the rook. So I will have to play uh, something like rook takes pawn. But when I take the pawn, I'm threatening uh, some things like the knight, like some checks over here, like this pawn over here. So I think I'm very well in that position. Yeah. So let's go to the next. In this position, it is white to move. And white has a pawn down. So let's find some weaknesses in black's position. We can see a uh, black king is in the same line as the rook. So probably we can get advantage of that. Also the knight and the king are in the same line. Probably that means something. And finally we can say that probably the king is a weakness. Uh, we can be thinking about. Because as you can see we are controlling many squares around black king. So let's try to f exploit those weaknesses with checks, captures, or threats. We, we shouldn't forget that this knight is getting the rook and this knight is getting our bishop. Well, this is just a trade, but we don't want to trade the bishop, I guess, by now. So the first move I'm analyzing here is this bishop f6. The idea is that uh, when the king moves, I will be getting the rook. So the problem is that is that if I take the rook, I'm losing my rook. So what I can play is bishop check, the king is going to move somewhere, and then I take the knight first, and then I will be taking the exchange. Yeah. So bishop check, let's say king d7 or d6, I just take here, and when he takes with the king, at least I can take here. So I'm getting the exchange. I think it's more or less clear that line. So I will play. So check. I take the knight so I don't lose my rook, and then in the next I get the I get the exchange. Okay, it is white to move here. The material, I think we have a piece down, and also one pawn. So black has an extra bishop and pawn here. So let's find some weaknesses in black's position. Well, the king is not castle; it's not very well protected. Also. Uh, this knight is dependent on this bishop. This bishop is dependent on the knight and the queen. This uh, bishop is dependent on the queen. So there are uh, some overloaded pieces here. So the queen has to protect here and here. That's a big problem, I think. Well, the first line I'm analyzing to exploit those weaknesses. Uh, of course, we need to work first with checks, but I already saw that knight takes bishop doesn't give us too much. Also, knight takes pawn does not give up too much. So I'm analyzing this idea with knight takes bishop because when he retakes with the knight, which is the only move, then I will take with my rook again. The idea is that if he takes with the queen, I can take here and fork. By the way, it's going to be a three ways fork. Although I'm just going to capture the queen in the next. So knight takes bishop and then rook takes knight. I think this is winning for white here. So I will play it. Okay, white to move here. Right now we have a piece down because black just captured something here. And also we have like one pawn down. So we have a, a, a piece and a pawn down. But it's our turn to play. We need to find some weaknesses. The first weakness I can see is the queen. We are threatening and taking his queen in the next move. That's very important. Of course, if we take it, uh, he can also take our queen. Another weakness, well, the king is in, in a very, probably, uh, unpleasant position. We can we can have some checks or something, uh, but maybe not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. Well, also I can notice, uh, now I, I need to exploit with checks, captures, and threats. And the first move I, I see is this queen d4 check, but it's not really working. Because he doesn't have to move the king. If he plays the, if he moves the king, I take the queen. But he doesn't have to move the king. He can just block 
with the queen and then I'm not getting too much so the check is not really working and then the captures the first capture is rook takes queen then we lose our queen and we cannot get too much remember we have a piece down and and then we just take and then he moves and takes something so we don't get too much with that capture and there is another capture I think very important and it is this capture here on c3 when I capture that knight then I'm threatening his queen and, and also threatening the knight so I think I'm getting material here with this capture he will have to move the queen and then I capture one knight so I will play it I'm sure that's right okay white to move here and mm, the material is balanced there is a, a, a big problem in this position for us black is moving the rook and promoting so that's something uh, we need to be careful with and well this is an endgame so it's hard to find like weaknesses sometimes but we have a very interesting past pawn here which is very good for us but as we said also black has a past pawn over here so black has a very clear threat they are threatening rook somewhere and promoting for example if we play c7 which is a very logical move black can play rook c1 and then if I play rook a4 then they promote I take his queen he takes our rook and when I promote there will be a check here forcing my king to go to the c file and then another check with the skewer getting my queen so this logical move c7 is not really working because in the end of the line when I play rook a4 I capture and I promote he will have check and check getting my queen with a skewer I can write a link with a video about skewer in the description so if you want to, lo to learn about the skewer you can take a look at, at that link so so the most logical move c7 is not really working also rook a4 very logical does not work because then black can play rook check and then when I move my king they are promoting so that this is a clearance they clear the the square and then they promote so this is not good so the only thing I can see with a very interesting possibility with very interesting possibilities for white is this rook d2 because then there, there are no checks also the rook cannot move and then I can continue with my ideas of uh, promoting the pawn so that's my favorite move here rook d2 then uh, rook f1 I guess I have to capture and this endgame is probably winning okay white to move here and let's analyze the material first of all and uh, we have like a minor piece down here so uh, black has an extra bishop over here but we have a couple of pawns like two pawns as compensation for that piece now let's find some weaknesses in black's position the first weakness I can see is this king so uh, we are controlling many squares around this king so it's not the king is not completely safe in this position it's something to think about very seriously I could say also there is a knight unprotected in the same file as our queen also the bishop is unprotected maybe we can get something over there so also light squares are a little weak here so let's try to exploit those weaknesses with checks captures or threats the first check I can think here is this knight g5 then he's going to play king h8 and then this is very interesting because uh, one of the weakness of the weaknesses we mentioned is weakness in light squares so after king h8 I can try to exploit the weakness here on h7 by playing queen g6 uh, threatening queen h7 mate after this move I think he has to take the knight I mean he doesn't have really strong checks or something queen f3 is not working queen e1 is not working either so after queen g6 he will have to take my knight and then I can come back to h5 now that the h file is open and this is made so I'm sure that's the line so I check and then I use the weakness in light squares with queen g6 and he takes I go I come back 
and that's checkmate. Okay, white to move here, we just have a piece down, a black just captured one piece. The material is, uh, I mean the pawns are equal, so let's see how to play. Let's find some weaknesses in black's position. Well, there is a pin over here, of course there is this bishop we can capture here, getting the material back. And also this pawn is a uh, unprotected, right? Because as we said, there is a pin, so no one is protecting this pawn, that's interesting. So let's try to target those weaknesses. This pawn is also hanging, I didn't say that. So let's try to target those weaknesses with checks, captures, and threats. The first check I can think is queen d8, obviously not working because we lose the queen, and queen takes pawn not working either because off king takes queen. So the checks are not working. Let's find captures, and the first capture I can think about is this h takes g6. When I take here, I'm threatening queen takes f7, and probably mate very soon uh, with queen and pawn, or with queen f8 also. So, yeah, pawn takes pawn, looks very well. Mm, let's see what can black play after that, maybe something like queen f4, interesting, protecting f7, but then I can trade everything on f7 and capture the bishop, and then I'm transposing to a pawn's endgame with a pawn up, which is going to be winning. So after pawn takes pawn, I don't see any other way for black to defend. Also queen e7, but it doesn't change anything, it's, a, it's the same thing we, we just said. So yeah, with, with pawn takes pawn, we're getting a pawn up and a transpose it to a, transposing to a pawn's endgame with a pawn up, just winning the game. So I just play it, I said queen takes pawn, and then I take the bishop. Okay, black to move here. We have a rook down. We have a couple of pawns for that rook. He has a pawn at the 6th rank. We need to be careful with that. So let's find some weaknesses here. There is a pin. The king is very open. So no pawns protecting. So there might be some important things over here. Let's try to target those problems with checks, captures, or threats. Of course, the first move I'm analyzing is rook here, check, because then uh, he cannot block. He has to move king h2 or king h1. But I can I can see that after king h2, I have mating one with queen h6. Interesting. So rook g6 only move king h1, and then what? How can I win? Well, mm, if I check, he blocks, and then if I take, he protects. So the check is not really working. But as the game is so open, maybe there are other things to change a little the position and probably get in something. So rook g6, king h1. There is also this check on e4. And after this check, he has to move. King h2 is one, rook f3 is the other one. After king h2, I have mate with queen h4. So king h2 is not working. After rook f3, I have check here on h4, he has to block. And then I take the rook, and this is checkmate. So the way to win is a fourth sequence with checks, with some accurate checks. So rook check first, and then this nice queen e4, and then mate in two. Okay, why to move here? The material is balanced. And, well, if we need to talk about uh, weaknesses, we can say, for example, this pawn is too advanced. We have the possibility to transpose right now to a pawn's endgame, which is something we need to look at. We don't have checks here, so I'm just going to analyze the capture rook takes rook, and let's see what happens after pawn takes rook, because then we have a pawn's endgame with the material balanced. So uh, let's see what can we get in that position. Something good, black is going to have double pawns here, but those two pawns are stopping these two pawns. So they are double, but they're not a great problem by now. However, I'm analyzing a line where I play something like a 4 The idea is that if he trades with this pawn, I can just take, and then we have 2 against 1 on this side of the board, as this pawn will be stopping these two pawns. So it should be very well for me if he trades in this way. But also when I play a 4 he can trade in this way. So I will have to take with the pawn, I mean with the king, in the next move I will play king e4 
and I have a very good feeling with that endgame because my king is going to e5 very soon. It's very active. He cannot avoid that. And once my king is on e5, I will have extra tempos. So that probably is very well for us. So yeah, rook takes rook, pawn takes rook, then f4. Let's say king f6. Pawn takes pawn, king takes pawn. I'm not sure about this because then king h3. And then let's say king goes back in here, and then he has a tempo here, but I can still play g5. So yeah, yeah, I think it's very well. But my question is, rook takes rook, pawn takes rook. What is better here, f4 or f3? Because probably there is a, a small difference in these lines. Well, I don't like f3 so much. He can play e5. And then this endgame is a draw, right? Yeah. So, rook takes rook, pawn takes rook. If I play f3, probably he plays e5. And then f4 is not so strong because there will be many trades. And then I only have these pawns. And that's not enough to win, even if I can get an extra pawn. There was an endgame, I think, between Kasparov and Carson these days. And I think it was similar uh, to this in the Chess Knight 60 uh, championship they played. So rook takes rook, pawn takes rook, and then f4 should be better than f3. Because f3, e5. And I don't see it so clear. Even if I, if I can take, then the, the king is, uh, is coming over here, facing our king, and probably I can get a draw on the, the opposition and a draw there. So my favorite line, rook takes rook, and then f4. It should be winning. Let's see. So rook takes. And then f4. That's the right move. I take. And as I said, I can play king e4 and then I can get e5. Or if he plays this move, I can just play king d5. And I'm getting the pawn and winning the endgame in that way. Okay, well, black plays in this position. And we need to find. Well, the material uh, we can say is more or less balanced. I think white has a pawn up over here so we have a pawn down in this position and we need to find some weaknesses in black's position I mean in white's position so we can say a rook dependent on a rook we can say the, the queen a little trapped over there the queen cannot move too much only to b7 and well also white king is a little open but it doesn't look like we can exploit that too much but we shouldn't forget it well, uh, when we analyze checks, captures, and threats, trying to exploit some of those problems, well, the first move I can think about is rook takes rook, after rook takes rook, then queen takes pawn, I'm getting one pawn back. But I don't think I'm winning in that position. Well, this is in interesting because I have some pressure here. There's some kind of pain. So he cannot move the knight. But he can play something like a uh, rook here. As his queen is a little out of play, maybe I can try something like queen here attacking the rook and the knight, and probably that's very well for for black. So yeah, I think that line is winning. Rook takes rook, and then queen takes pawn. It's not only about the pawn, it's about the piece I'm getting with this pin here. Because the knight cannot move, he will need to defend the knight with the rook. And even if he plays rook e2, I just check our d4. If he plays rook d1, I play queen c2 with the double attack over here. So I will play that. Rook takes rook, and queen takes c3. Queen b7 is a move we didn't analyze, so let's make a small pause here. And, well, I think we should just capture the knight on d2, also attacking the rook. I don't see any problem with that line. We can also check first we should d4 king h1, but I don't think that helps black too much. So we just capture here and then after queen e4 we have some ways to play but I really like the option of trading queens of, with queen d4 after queen takes, bishop takes, this is just winning I think. Okay, white plays, we need to find the best move here and the material we have a pawn down in this position so let's find some weaknesses for black. 
Well, the background is not completely safe. I see we have some ideas here over D8. It's protected by the rook, but uh, probably it's not enough protection for the back rank this time. Also, unprotected rook here. This rook is also unprotected, but a little le less exposed on g8. This bishop is also hanging on or unprotected here on a3. So, and also, well, the king is not completely safe in this position. So, let's find a way to exploit those problems with checks, captures, or threats. The first check I can analyze is this rook d8. Probably he has to capture and then I retake and then he blocks. Then I could be playing something, something like queen d3. That's interesting because I have a double attack on these unprotected pieces we mentioned. And then he can play rook takes knight and queen takes rook. So I get the exchange in that line. That's That should be good. That should be fine. So rook d8 if he doesn't take, I just capture the rook. And he's probably winning for for white. So if he takes, I just take here. And when he blocks, which is the only move, queen d3, double attack. I don't see a way black can defend both things. So this line should be winning for white. I don't see anything better than that. So I'm, I'm just playing that on the war. And then we get the exchange. So this is the video I wanted to show you today. I hope you have enjoyed it and that you have learned something new here. If it was like that, don't forget to give me some likes. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, so you get notifications for my next videos. Never stop believing. See you in the next. <laughs>